Over the last two sets through the expansion slot, the mech class got much needed Arcane Evo support. So now, nearly one year after Teklavasin's release, is he finally nearing that space where he can legitimately contend in the realities of an arcane world? Or is it just too much of a sideboard cost, leaving him just too exposed across a wider field? So today, let's discuss, is it Teklavasin's time? A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando. Hey there, my flesh and blood friends. Welcome back to Dice Commando, and go again, a fabulous cast. And thanks for tuning in today, talking Tech Levasin. And I'm asking the question, now that we are finally seeing some arcane barrier capable base equipment coming out here shortly in Rosetta, is now finally Teklavasin's time to shine, almost almost one year after his release in Bright Lights. So let's talk about that today. Now, Teklavasin himself is, is actually a really cool hero in, in theory, right? There's there's a lot of this type of playstyle actually really, really, really appeals to a, you know, a certain type of player base where you're basically just behind trying to tank and survive and then you know, build Ultron and just kind of go. Because once you do the whole singularity thing and flip, it's like, what, 9 out of 10, 98 out of 100, whatever it might be, you pretty much win the game. <laughs> At the very least, your opponent's in an extremely rough spot. So this is a, you know, a certain type of control player. This is their dream, right? You can, you know, you with the, the big majestic equipment, you get a temper three, so you get a three block, a two block, a one block, you overwrite it. It's pretty massive survivability, value there right plus you have the techlo leveler on board which gets more value with the more evos you get and then of course you have all of the massive payoff attacks annihilator engine terminator tank war machine all these nasty big things coming at you and they are ran when you're got when you have three evos on board man starts getting rough starts getting rough and it, yeah so that's very cool right it's a very cool type of play style not not specifically my type of play style i like to provide constant pressure but again there's a lot of people that just really appeals to However, he's had a problem, right? In that he just really can't do anything with Arcane because he has to play Evos, right? If you want to get to the four Evos, you have to start with enough base to get there and historically has had a problem. He also has, you know, so you have, you know, obviously the Arcane thing, not just the chips, but like, how do you stop an Aether Wildfire outside of Oasis? How do you stop the Aether Wildfire and all the combos there? The answer is you really can't and you just kind of go down and the proof is in the pudding there, right? He's, I, I think there's been maybe like one or two top eights, right? I'm not trying to take anything away from anybody, but the data is there. It, he has not been very good in the meta to this point because primarily of that. He also does have some threat. I also think he would be, if, if he was a little more prevalent in the meta, I think we would also see him struggling from the fact that assassins are everywhere and shred like really hurts when you throw out an Evo and you lose it because they shred it. So that's a risk there as well. He was actually, you know, I do want to say Teklavasin was actually doing pretty, both of the professor or the professor and then normal Teklavasin were actually doing pretty well in Blitz until Blaze's drop. And, you know, really the only time they would just like straight up lose was shred. But otherwise they were actually doing, doing pretty well. But that's again, because of the, aside from Emperor, that was the only real, you know, you had Briar on Rosetta and then you had on Rosetta Thor, and I should say for clarity, and then you had Emperor. Those were your really only two threats. So he was he was doing okay, solid tier two, tier one point five hero, and both of them were. Now, of course, you have the lifeline, which is fabricate, which lets you re-equip your base if it gets shredded. So that handles, at least in theory, the temper problem. But you don't have an answer really for the arcane problem. And that was until, of course, basically now. Now, let's be very clear. We did have arcane-capable Evos that came out in the last set in Mistvale. The problem with the arcane Evos is you still had to find them in time before you died, right? And when you've got opting on board and some pretty good speed and there's chip, 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 that hurts. And then maybe, you know, again, you have to do the thing to get them out and then maybe they hit you and it's just, it just, it just didn't math out on paper, right? In theory, it was cool to get that, but you still had to go fish them out and it was basically, can I get it before they do? 
And again, the, the proof is in the pudding, I think is how they say. It just, it just wasn't working, right? But now let's fast forward to Rosetta. And we have what appears at least to be a solution in the adaptive dissolver. Okay, so this is, is modular, which means that this single card can, in theory, if you have three of them, right, you can put them in various, well, whichever Evo slots you need, or I should say whichever base slots, excuse me, whichever base slots you need them to go for. Now, I do want to say, because I think a lot of people have been waiting, there's a lot of Tecla fans out there that have like the fully bling Teclo decks. You've seen them, you know who you are, right? Mad props to you, your decks are beautiful. But they've been basically sitting on the sidelines waiting. So I do think this card's going to be a pricey one right when it comes out because i think people are going to need i don't know at least more than one of them right let's throw that out there so i think this one you know that's got it going for which is exciting but now we have a base right we have a base with arcane barriers so you can actually start with it so that is the at least in theory that doesn't mean it's an auto win not what i'm saying at all but finally finally we have a base starting point that he can actually have what he needs so now he can at least survive until he gets maybe those other evos that may like maybe they're playing the other arcane evos i i think you're going to i think you're going to have to right because if we go back to you know the big payoffs most of them require you to not have base present but have evos present which means that you're going to have to upgrade so then if you're not playing the arcane evos you're losing your arcane barrier right to make yourself stronger which in that matchup is actually making yourself weaker so that's an interesting push pull which tells me that you're going to have to run those so now let's think about the survivability of this right you start with the base so you don't have to survive as much but you've got to try and survive until you can fish out what you need to actually start doing your thing because like i said you you can't evo with any evo that you have you have to evo only with specific evos so now you're not only fishing you're fishing for specific ones and on top of that let's think about just on the surface how much sideboard space we're using at a minimum here you're using up what six cards right because you would do three base I and mean, i think that's the right play i don't think you'd go four so i think you'd go three base and three evos and maybe you go four evos so but at a minimum at six maybe seven cards out of your sideboard and that's assuming you don't want to throw in like an oasis or something like that on top of that. Now you do get a little bonus back in again on a lot of the payoffs that they can be poppers for you. So you get a little help there, but you don't have a lot else of room, right? You don't have a lot of other room with which to tech for the rest of the field. So whereas I say there on the side, now he can survive better at least, or can he because now he has to actually take a hit compared to the wider field it's i mean I, again i think you have to like if you're a tackle boss and again if, if you're an experienced tackle boss and player let me know but I, I i don't i don't think you don't maybe you bring two i don't know but like, tell me what the number what the right number is but i i don't see you not bringing some of this arcane stuff because that's basically your auto lose or at least it was previously so I think flipping into that, but you got to give a lot, a lot of spots with which to do that. It's a lot less flexibility. So can he handle the main field? I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't mind seeing Teklavasen become a little better because some of the, A, he deserves it, and the players have been playing it for a year, and they've got their stuff ready to go. But if you were to look at somebody like, you know, maybe not a Zen specifically with just the raw damage output, but a bunch of go-wide decks, you know, you're equipment blocking for three and then being around for two and around for one that's pretty good value on like a low drop block right for effectively one card from hand and one to play it so two cards from hand that's that's not bad value on like a go wide deck to try and do something so it would be interesting to see how he's there plus you've got the in many cases again i'll, I'll throw it up the disruptive potential the potential disruptive on hits right depending on when you're throwing them i mean these cards right here are pretty massive value if you are equipped up the challenge is you just have to get equipped up and i think previously couldn't survive so that's the question is will he be able to survive um you know kind of in wrap up here i i do think i think that the sideboard space is going to be a potential problem uh, we will have to see what the smart kids who've been waiting in the wings on tech of austin will do with this but i i don't think it's a let's just say this he's going to get better but i don't I don't foresee it being as much of a, I don't foresee it being a slam dunk. 
I think it's still going to be an edge wing hero. But hey, you've got disruption on board, which we've seen is very good. You've got big attacks on board. You've got pretty darn good defense on board. You have a good suite of blues. You have some really neat things you can do with boosting and putting some threats on. And then if you do manage to hit your ultimate, who boy, game over from there. So anyway, let me know below what you think. You think it's Teklavasin's time? Maybe it's not his time, but at least maybe he's moving towards the clock or whatever it may be. So anyway, let me know what you're thinking below. Thanks, folks. And go Commando.